In today's episode, we're going to be learning how to get information from an external sensor like this onto the ESP32. The sensor we're using today is the DHT22 or the AM2032. It's the same device, really. If you followed along on my first episode, this is the one that I recommended, and it's linked down below on episode one. I'll also link it down below on this episode. And the reason I recommended this is because it has a built-in pull-up resistor, which is required when using one of these. You can buy the sensor itself by itself, and it is a bit cheaper, but then you have to do something like I've done over here, and you can see I've put a resistor across the positive, or the five volts, and the second pin. So there's actually four pins, you can see that over there. And we're only using three pins. There's, <laughs> I've, I've never figured out what that third pin is for, but it's, yeah, it never gets used. So these are the layouts here. If you do want to buy one of these on their own, all you need to do is put a 10K resistor across pin one and pin two, and you should be just fine. First things first, let's connect this to the ESP32. It's pretty basic. The left-hand side pin is for positive or five volts or three volts. This is tolerant of quite a range of voltage, but we're gonna use five volts for this. The second pin is the data pin, and that's gonna go into one of the GPIO. GPIO is just general purpose input output, and these pins that have inputs and outputs on the ESP32, that's what they are, GPIO. The right-hand side pin is negative or ground. Let's connect that up. So we have black on the ground, we have red for the signal, and we have brown for power. On the back of the ESP32, we can find five volts down the bottom right. So brown for five volts. Then we have black for ground, and there's a ground pin over there. There are multiple ground pins, they're all connected to each other, so it doesn't matter which one you use. And then we're gonna go with input output 13, I think. So if you plug it into IO 13, we now have this all connected, and this is ready to go. All we need to do now is put a bit of code onto this so that we can read the sensor readings and display it out onto the serial monitor. The first thing we're going to need to do is install the libraries we're going to be using. To do that, we need to go to Tools, then Manage Libraries, and do a search for DHT. the one labeled as DHT Sensor Library by Adafruit. Click Install on that, and you'll see that it needs some dependencies, so Install All. Once that's completed, we can move on to the next steps. I'm gonna put some code in here that I've already written, so we're gonna replace what's there already. And let's take a quick walkthrough. Firstly, we're including the library DHT.h. This is the one we installed a little bit earlier. We are defining which pin the sensor is connected to. So if you remember, it's IO13. Then we're defining the type of sensor we have as the DHT22. There are other sensors as well in this range, the DHT11 and the DHT23. Just make sure you got the correct one there. Here we're initializing the DHT sensor with the pin and the type. We're then doing the setup, which is same as before. We are serial.begin 9600, so that's setting up that we can actually output to the serial monitor. And over here we have DHT.begin. This here is initializing the actual DHT sensor. Then we go to the loop. First thing we're gonna do is create a delay. So this is delaying by 2000 milliseconds. Delays are quite useful. Just uh, remember they have their place. There are sometimes better ways to do things instead of a delay. A delay is basically just putting a pause at this point. So it gets to this point here. It'll delay by 2000 milliseconds, which is two seconds, and then it'll move on to the rest. So if you are interested in energy saving, delays are not exactly the best thing to use. Over here, we're assigning H 
as a floating point number. So we're creating a variable H and we're assigning that to dht.readhumidity. So this is calling a method called readhumidity from the DHT library and that's assigning that value to H. We're doing the same thing here with T for the temperature, so read temperature. And this one here is a same as the read temperature, but it's for Fahrenheit. So this one here is getting the read in Celsius. This one over here is getting the read in Fahrenheit, so if that's what you prefer. And the only difference there is putting the word true inside the brackets, that gives you Fahrenheit. This bit of code over here is very interesting. This is some code that you'll be using quite frequently. It is an if-then statement. So the basic structure of an if-then statement is if statement. So if that statement is true, then perform this action. It'll be, let's say, serial print line is true. So essentially this statement could be anything. It could be one equals two. That will be false. So it's not gonna put this bit of code in play. It's gonna skip over it and move on to the next part. If I change this to one equal one, one equal one is equal to true. Therefore it's going to print this statement. And this is gonna be used quite frequently. You can imagine as we have down here, if we look at this and see what this is doing, the statement says is NAN, meaning is not a number, H. So it's looking at this value here, which it's got from this line. And if H is not a number, or T is not a number, or F is not a number, then it will give you this line here saying there's no reading from the DHT sensor, and it's going to return. And return is going to take you to the top of this loop and start again. These lines here just means or, you can also use and, but in this case we are using or, and that's basically evaluating these three statements, making sure that they all are true, which means that they all are numbers. If, for example, we wanted to check whether the temperature was higher than 20, we could do that here. So if T is bigger than 20, then we want a print line temperature is higher than 20. Now, that doesn't seem so useful, but what would be useful is if you turn on a fan when the temperature gets above 20. And this is where if then statements really come in to their own. So let's move on to the rest of this code and we'll be using those if then statements quite a lot in the future. So don't worry, we will get back to them at some point. If they are all numbers, then it just skips over this and it's gonna move on to the next part. And it's actually gonna start printing out those variables. So here we can see print humidity colon and it'll print out the variable H. And if you notice, there's no inverted commas because if there was, then all it will do is actually print out the letter H. But if you leave out the inverted commas, it's gonna print out a number or whatever the value is within that variable. And then after H, it's going to print a percentage sign because humidity is a percent. And then it does this as a print line, which means that it's going to do a carriage return and show temperature. But let's compile this and let's see it actually work. And there we go, there's our code. Every two seconds, it's going to be reporting the humidity and the temperature. And I'm sure you can see just how useful that could be with some of the projects that you might wanna do. And I know it's definitely useful for the projects that I do. So that shows you basically how to get information off of a sensor like this one over here. I'll show you that it is live if I just hold it. I should be able to get that temperature to rise and you should also see the humidity rising as well. So there you go, you can see it's going up 24 degrees, 24.3.
I hope that was useful for you and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Until then, stay spicy. I hope that you're enjoying this series and that you're getting some value out of it. And if you are, please consider supporting me on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash chili chump. And if you sign up there to support me, then you get access to my private Discord server where there are multiple channels that you can come have discussions around anything I talk about in my videos, things like growing and source making, and of course, electronics projects and automation. So it's a good place to come and ask questions if you have any questions around automation that you're doing for yourself or anything that I've talked about in my videos. And I really hope to see you there.